one of the first things you're going to need to do is choose a photo to work from. You're going to look for several things in the photo. First, it needs to be clear. It can't be blurry at all. If it is, you're just not going to be able to pull out the detail that you need. Here's an example of a picture that wouldn't work because it's not clear enough. The next thing you're going to need is good contrast, which is basically a balance of your lights and your darks. This next picture has actually too much contrast. You can see how deep and dark the shadows are and how light the rest of it is. Your overall picture shouldn't be too dark or too light because that's not going to give you good results either. Here's a picture that's just too light and there's not enough contrast. You just can't pull up the detail you're going to need. And last but not least, you need a good picture of the person or pet. Something that represents them nice. We actually took about 45 pictures of this scene to get what we wanted. And I'll show you the final pastel piece. There it is. Okay, we've got our picture. Now, how do we get it onto the paper? You can, of course, draw it on by hand, which is time consuming and not always that accurate. The best bet would probably be an opaque projector, and you can get them from the very inexpensive. This is an inexpensive model. It's got a light bulb and a mirror underneath that basically projects the picture through the lens. This one's definitely more expensive. This one also projects onto the wall, and the picture goes underneath here. This kind is my favorite because the picture is shot on a flat surface and it's a little bit easier to work with and to draw from. There you see the picture that's projected downward. Put your piece of paper in that area and you simply draw the outline. Many modern day artists work this way, including Norman Rockwell I read. It's definitely the quickest most accurate way to get your photograph onto your paper. Because you're working with a light bulb, it does have a tendency to get hot. and You don't want to leave your photograph on it for too long. Another way to get the outline on the paper is by using a grid. It's always a good idea to have a second photograph when you're using this method. What you're going to basically do is draw a series of squares on your photograph or overlay a piece of acrylic with the squares already on it. And you're going to do the same thing onto your paper that you're going to draw on. We're going to choose a square just to show you the square here. And we basically, in the corresponding square on the paper, draw out the outline. Make sure the squares you draw on the paper are done very, very lightly and done with a pastel pencil. The paper we're going to use is velour. It's going to make a big difference over what you may have used in the past, so don't uh, try to use another paper on this. Definitely go out and find yourself some velour or go online and find it. It comes in a large variety of colors and you can choose which one you want to work on or get a, a pack with a variety of colors and give them all a try. The paper itself has a velvety feel to it. Make sure you hang on to your scraps because I'll show you what to do with those later in the video. If you don't already have pastels, you may consider a kit. This kit has quite a number of pastels in it. It's not that expensive. It's an excellent way to start. It's got really, really nice flesh colors in it for portraits. There are so many pastel companies out there. You might try several different kinds just to see what you like. Everybody has their own personal preference when it comes to the pastels. This is just a good way to start. Now you have your pastels and there's going to be times when they get a little dirty or you want a sharp edge. So how do you go about sharpening and cleaning? Really easy. Take an old rag. Here's an old t-shirt. I'm just rubbing the edges of the pastel. Get some of that dark color that it picked up by sitting next to another pastel and just rubbing it clean. To sharpen the edge you can either break the pastel in half, which will definitely give you sharp edges where you broke it, or you can rub one side of it across fine grade sandpaper. This gives you really nice sharp edges too. We'll work a little bit on matching colors. This is where your scrap paper comes in. Take a piece of your scrap paper. I'll put a piece of cardboard underneath here to protect my table. I'm going to take my base color and I'm just going to put it on the edge of my scrap paper. Let's, let's do three little areas here to compare. This is my base color. Now I'm going to put down three separate colors, one on each. I'm 
I'm going to put them down in the order that I did them so I don't mix up which color went where. Just gently going over my base color. And we'll compare it to the color in the photograph we want to try to match. I'm trying to match this purple. Lay each one against it. I kind of like this bottom one here, but it's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to take a light, light lilac. Go over that gently, and then we'll match it again. Yeah, that's, that's about what I want. You have to be very careful when it comes to spray fixatives on pastels because some of them will literally eat the chalk away. I recommend Blair Very Low Odor Spray Fix 105. It's the only one I found that really, really works well on the velour paper. Start by spraying off of the picture and just, this is all you're doing, very, very, very lightly and let it dry several minutes and then put another light coat going in the opposite direction. The last thing you want to do when you get to this point is ruin your picture by putting too much fixative or the wrong kind of fixative on. So be really careful and go really slow. You just want to hold the chalk in place. You don't want to saturate it. Now that you have your material list, let's get started. I'm using a dark brown pastel pencil. I always start with the eyes because I figure if you can't get the eyes right, there's no sense in doing the rest of the piece. So I usually start with a pupil and I always leave the little light reflections blank. I don't fill those in yet. We'll put those in later with the white. I'm putting the dark edges of the iris in. If you look at most eyes, right around the edge is a little bit darker. You'll want to check your own reference material to see just how dark you need to put it. What you really need to do is look at what you're working from. Really, really look at the piece. Underneath the eyelid is a little bit darker also because there's a shadow there that's created by the lid itself. Now on this particular piece, I'll show you the, a close-up of the picture in a second here. We're going to put in a couple of areas that are just a little bit darker than the rest. And that's because that's how it looks in this particular eye. Every eye is going to be different. Right here is the spot I was talking about. And it's the little touches like this that make or break a piece. You really want to study your reference material and you want to put in the details that you find. And you're going to have to look for the details. There's no way around it. I'm not guessing here. I keep looking back at my reference material. Make it match. Now because she has makeup on the bottom lashes, it's quite dark underneath the eye. Again, look at your material, look at your picture and see if you need to go dark or light or what, what each aspect looks like. That is really the biggest key, is to look at your reference material. Eyelashes usually look like they're in clumps. You don't see the individual hairs too much. You don't put real lines in the face. It's more of a shading and a shadowing. Just referring back to the picture and seeing where it needs to be dark. Awful lot of uh, bottom lashes in this particular picture. If you don't see bottom lashes in the picture, don't draw them. You want to basically draw what you see. going to do the other eye the same way. It 
get that dark ring around the iris. Start filling it in a little bit with some uh, light and dark areas as needed. One of the most important things I ever learned was draw what you see, not what you know. You know an eyeball is round, but in the picture it may not appear round, so you have to draw what you see if you want it to look like the picture, like the photograph. Now the eyebrows are interesting. We are going to put in a little bit of a, a shading here, just some because the eyebrows are actually just individual hairs but because they're so close together the skin underneath is actually shadowed by the hairs and you need to draw the individual hairs in the direction that they grow so first we shadowed a little bit and then we started to put in some individual hairs there's going to be places you can see individual hairs and there's going to be places that you can't Starting in putting shadows in other places, we'll do the other eyebrow here. Again, draw it in the direction that the hair grows. Starting to put some individual hairs in. Now we're going to go over this all with color, but this really gives us a good foundation. The more faces you do, the more you'll learn where the shadows are going to be found. Even though the shadows are different on everybody's face and it depends on the shape of their face and the lighting, you still kind of get an idea of, of where they're going to be found. You can always go back and touch things up as you go. Once you're, you know, you don't have to say, oh, I'm done with that eye, I don't have to touch it anymore. You can always go back and add more detail. A little bit of shadow here from the hair. The hair falling over the face definitely makes a shadow on the skin. And I just press down heavy or lightly or whatever pressure I need depending on how dark I want the area. It's always better to start out a little lighter than you think than to put it in too dark and then to try to get it off. On this velour paper you're not going to get it off. You may be able to go over it and cover it but you're not going to get it off. So start out a little lighter and darken it up as you go as you need to. kind of jump around a little bit as I see different shadows and start to put them in. Put a little bit of shadow in the ear area here. We're not going to put too many details into the ear. A lot of times if you make an ear too detailed it actually becomes a focal point and it takes away from the rest of the face. So you want to kind of mute the ear just a little bit. Continuing to put shadows in. There's kind of a deep shadow right underneath her chin. Now in this particular picture her hand shows, but we're not going to detail the hand out too much because I want to concentrate on the face. Areas like this you want to be careful because if you make it too dark or too deep you're going to make it look like wrinkles. So we go a little bit easy here. the nostril in. A little bit more shadow here. A lot of people make the mistake of outlining the lips. You have to be very careful about that because the lips are just, it's all shading. It's not outlines at all. Because of the way the light hits it, the top lip of a person is actually usually a little bit darker than the bottom lip. Something to just make a note of. Put some more shading in here. We'll talk a little bit more about the lips later. Let's 
getting some of the shadowing in from the nose. The nose casting a shadow onto the skin. She's got an awful lot of little tiny ridges in her lips. They're not actually lines, they're ridges. So you need to do shading and not just draw straight lines. It's important also to try to keep your pencil fairly sharp gives you more control over the details. So I keep looking back at my photo that I'm working from, seeing where the shadows are. Trying to get some of those little creases and crevices and ridges she has in her lips. Got quite a shadow going on underneath here, so we're going to make that dark. You can see the shadow there a little better. Putting it in. Again, I'm just kind of skipping around the face as I see different areas that need to be added to or improved on. I go ahead and do them. She has quite a shadow on this one side of her face on her uh, forehead, so we're going to be putting that in. kind of using the side of the pencil here to give me more of a shaded look to it. And this is actually the, it's a pretty up and down kind of shadow. Just kind of put the basics in here and then we'll darken it as we go. You can skip this part if you want. If you want to just go directly to the colored pastels and not worry about sketching it in. But I think this gives it a really, really good foundation that can make your piece much better in the end. If you need pointers on sketching or you want to really learn how to do it, I do have a DVD on, on drawing portraits that can help you out quite a bit. Now this, this area right here there's a light area that's right on the edge. You want to really pay attention to areas like that. We're going to leave it a little bit lighter as we're drawing it. It's a light reflection that's coming from the other side and it really, really will improve your piece if you can pay attention and find areas like that. I'm going to start the eye with some color here. It's kind of a bluish gray eye. So I chose a bluish, a bluish gray color, and I'm putting in the darker areas in the eye. Just the darkest areas. Looks a little dark here, but uh, we're going to lighten that up in a minute. I've got some black, a black pastel pencil. I'm putting in my iris again and I'm going to darken up the edges just a little bit more with the black. If you look really close at the photo, her edges, the edges of the iris are so dark they're almost black. 
Now not everybody's will be like this. You're going to have to look at your picture and choose. Now I've got a lighter blue and I'm going in and I'm making little slash marks more or less because that's how her eye looks. I'm going to lighten it up quite a bit from what we were saying a minute ago. Now if you look she also has some brown in her iris. So we have a golden brown and we're putting in a couple of slash marks to represent that. There we go. Come back in with my black and just touch up the lashes around it a little bit, a little bit of the shadowing. Now the, the white of the eye isn't actually white. Again, you have to look at your picture and choose. Sometimes you can use like a really light, light flesh color. Here I'm using, I'm starting with a cream color because looking at the picture, that's what I'm seeing is kind of a creamy color. And then I'm going over certain areas with a very, very light blue. Because again, that's what I see in the picture. I go back in with my black a little bit just to clean things up a little bit. Get my areas a little deeper and darker. Now she has a little bit of a flesh color showing right here above the eyelash line. So I'm going to take a flesh colored pastel pencil and put it in just a little bit. Again it's these little details that make the difference. Taking a white, a very pure white and putting in the reflections in the eye. Look at your picture. Don't just guess where they're supposed to be or what shape they're supposed to be. Putting a little bit of white in the white area of the eye. I'm going to do the other eye the same way I did this one. Refer back to your picture often. Keep it really close by. Here I have an enlargement of just the eyes to give me a little better view of what they look like. Take my black. Go back in. Make things a little darker. Now I'm taking the same flesh colored uh, pastel pencil and doing the corners, the inside corners of the eye which have a little bit of a fleshy look to them. Just look at your picture and see where the color needs to be and put it in. I'm also going to take a white here and put just a tiny, tiny spot in there because I can see a white reflection in the photograph. I take my uh, fluorescent orange and I actually am going to break it because I only need a small piece of it. It's way too big the way it comes. And I start layering this color over all of her skin area. It looks looks too bright, it looks out of place and unrealistic, but it kind of, because we have that bright color underneath what we're going to use for her flesh, it kind of makes it glow. So using the side of the pastel, we're just layering it in, almost coloring book style. Just kind of light strokes and you know we'll go over it a few times and try to blend it a little better. We're going over the lips too because the lips are actually flesh even though they're not a flesh color. So doing the lips is, is a good idea at the same time. We will put different colors in the lips in a little bit. Go over it a few times just lightly each time because the, the velour paper will only hold so much chalk so we don't want to put it on really heavy. We want to make sure we have plenty of holding power left. Okay we're taking our, our medium color brown and we're putting in some of the shadows. We're not putting in the lightest shadows with this. We're putting in the darker and medium shadows definitely. And we can see some of the shadowing still that we put in with our pencil and this will help guide us as to where we need to put this color in. These are shadows from the hair I'm putting in. They're not the hair themselves, they're the shadows call that are falling on the forehead. Just 
shadow in the eyebrows a little bit and then the, the side here where we had the deep dark shadows and what I just did there I'm blowing off some of the extra dust you want to be careful not to spit when you do that though I have a small air filter that I set up next to my pastel area because as you're working these do give off dust and you don't want to be breathing that in so if you don't have a small air filter of some sort that you could put next to you then a mask of some sort to stop you from breathing the dust in would be a really good idea I have my table set up at about a 45 degree angle as I'm working I find if I work flat that it kind of distorts what I'm looking at and it just doesn't give me the the angle that I need to to be looking or working some people work totally vertical when they do pastels it's I just I not comfortable doing that so we're putting in the shadows they look a little bit rough and they're they're a little bit splotchy and not even but I will show you how to even those out in a few minutes here so just get the areas in keep looking at your reference picture it's so important to look at your picture find the details and then put them in I use kind of the edge of the pastel if it needs to be a little bit darker or like for the nostril area where it needs to be a little bit more controlled I use the edge of the pastel and then if it's a wider area like the forehead then I may lay the pastel on its side to to use just a second ago you saw me rub my finger against it and what I was doing was just smoothing it out just a little bit on the velour paper it kind of the next layer of pastel kind of smooths it out for you so you don't have to use your fingers too much in fact using your fingers doesn't work that well it will do small areas and a little bit but but not a lot just looking at my picture and putting in the areas of dark that I see Sometimes it helps to squint and you know you're telling your brain you're just looking for the dark areas so if you squint at the picture with that in mind the dark areas will come up and you will be able to see them a little bit better because she has such big lips she has quite a bit of shadowing in between the top lip and the bottom lip getting all those creases and crevices in again and I can see my lines that I've already put in so that helps me quite a bit when I get to the colored part when I get to to put in this area gives me a definite guide to go by darken up a little bit some of those shadows that I've already put in starting to take form you can see parts of it start to recede and parts of it start to come out deepen up that crease a little bit right above her eye after I get this dark shoulder done over here I'm gonna switch colors we're gonna continue with the shading just with a different color some of the shadows have more of a reddish hue to them than a brown so what I'm doing is using what's called cinnamon and different pastel brands have different names for their colors but this particular one is cinnamon and it has a reddish brown to it you definitely don't want to use a red red in the face not, usually not even in the lips because it's just not a natural color 
but this is it's more like a reddish brown and we're looking at our picture always always referring back to our picture to find the the colors the areas where this color needs to be again squint at your photo and you can make the colors pop we've got some color right here we're going to put in there's a shadow there and it's this reddish color it's definitely not a brown blend it a little bit with the fingers always make sure your fingers are clean before you blend with your fingers because if you have black or some other odd color on there and you touch your piece you're going to end up with quite a mess you can see that some of the shadowed areas are more of this reddish brown and some of them are more of the brown that we already used you do want to keep looking back at your photo and seeing where you need to put the different colors in so we're looking at our photo when we're making our judgment calls deciding where this reddish brown should be some of the areas we're going over the brown that we already put in it kind of blends it together it gives it more of the look that we're looking for because pastels are a layering technique you put one color over another now the forehead shadow here is kind of this reddish brown that fades into this darker brown so that's what we're going to work on right here We're going to break this. It's looking a little bit uh, too much like lines and we want to kind of fade it in a little bit better. So using the side of the pastel definitely works better for that. We're going over the brown that we already put in, blending it together, using the fingers a little bit to blend it. Just lightly using the side of the pastel. Just looking for the areas and putting them in as we see them. If we miss something, we can always go back in later. Now what I have is a light flesh color. And I'm kind of going over the whole thing really, really lightly. This is my main flesh color and it is toning down that fluorescent orange and it is blending the shadows in. It's a real subtle change, but it makes all the difference in the world. I'm using the side of the pastel for this. Now I'm taking my black pencil again, and I'm putting in the eyelashes. I know we've done the eyelashes before, but this time we're, we're really putting the final touches on them, making them as deep and as dark as they need to be, putting in any little stray hairs that may be. Keep your pencil sharp doing this part. You want to be able to get those fine, fine eyelashes in there, in the bottom especially. It's hard to get a really sharp point on a pastel pencil, so just do the best you can. Stop and take a look. You don't have to just keep working. Stop and look at your photograph you're working from. Stop and look at the piece you're working on. Put the hairs in for the eyebrow in the direction that they grow in. Just look at your reference picture and you'll be able to tell where they are. Then we do the same thing to the other eye. and the other eyebrow. 
Using a very dark reddish brown, we're going to go ahead and put some of the color into the lips. Blowing off some dust. The lips are going to look a little darker than they're going to end up as we're doing this. You want to keep a very sharp edge on the pastel as you're doing this to get those creases in there. And if you viewed some of the uh, earlier spots on the DVD, you'll know how to sharpen your pastel. We're going over some of the uh, dark areas that we already put in. But this definitely gives it more of the color that we need it to be. We're not going over the whole lips, we're just putting in the darkest areas again. Now what we have is a lighter pink color, like a coral pink, and we're putting in the lighter colors of the lips. And we are going over some of the darker areas and covering them up with this, and it kind of blends it all in together. We're not doing the highlights yet, just putting in the pink over the, uh, the majority of the lips. Now I have my darkest brown and I'm putting in my deepest shadows. Even though we have some pretty dark shadows already on the face, some of them just aren't dark enough. So we're going in with this, and we're putting in our darkest shadows. Not going over everything, just where they're the darkest. Kind of using the edge in some areas, and then the flat side in other areas depending on how big the area is and how sharp I need the shadow to be. Going kind of slow because I keep referring back to my photo. Getting those dark areas nice and full. This is really giving the face some dimension now. Even going into the lips a little bit and giving it some really dark areas. shadow under the lip is really dark. I'm going to go in here and darken this area up quite a bit. I've got white and I'm going in now and putting the highlights into the eyes. Really give it some sparkle. I know we did that before. But this, we kind of lose that a little bit working on it, and I just wanted to bring that back out. Put a little bit of highlight onto the flesh, and I'll tell you what, I'm not happy with the white on the flesh, so I'm going to a cream color here instead. This is where the piece really comes to life, in my opinion, is when you start to put the highlights in. Got quite a bit of highlights on one side of her face and a little bit on the other.
This is a really good time to squint at your photo and just bring the highlights into, into focus. Yeah, I like this cream color much better than the white for the for the highlight. Sometimes you will use white, and sometimes you'll use cream, and then you'll go over certain areas with white to bring them out even further. This is definitely my favorite part, the highlights. You need highlights and you need shadows in your photographs to get a really good finished product. Without one or the other, it's going to just look flat. Sometimes I use the edge and sometimes I use the flat side, again depending on how dark I want the, uh, well in this case how light I want the, uh, the mark to be and how big it is. You can see that nose really starts to look like it's actually coming out of her face. Coming forward. Boy, those highlights just make all the difference in the world. Got a little bit of white hair lightening up the areas of the nose, just a little bit to bring it bring it out just a little bit more than the than the cream was doing. A little bit of white on the ear of the lip. Just a little. I'm going to put the highlights into the lip now with the white and that'll make the lip really, really pop too. I'm using the edge of it here because I need it. I need really strong little little defined areas. The edge in the corner of the pastel. I'm gonna want to make sure that the pastel is sharp. And remember we talked about this lighter area earlier in the side of her face. We're gonna put that back in there. We left it kind of blank before. Now we're gonna kind of put it in there. I think you'll see it really makes a big difference in the way the edge of the face looks against the shoulder. Darken that shoulder up a little bit more. It's really starting to look like it's coming alive now. At this point we're going to put the background in. We want the hair to lay over the background, so we put the background in before we put the hair in. So I'm just putting down a, a layer of blue with the side of a pastel. If you go over the hair area a little bit, it's not going to make much of a difference. I, I'm just trying to put in a really, just a rough background in here. I'm, I'm not going too fancy with this particular background. You could put, you know, several layers if you want in the background make it really deep, really dark. I just want to give you an idea of a background. So we're going to take some purple and go over the blue. 
Give it a little bit of a dimension, but still keeping it really, really simple. Again, using the side of the pastel. Just almost like a sketchy looking background on this particular piece. Nothing too fancy. Just a little bit of color. first layer for the hair is actually a goldish color that we're going to put in here. We're just going to layer it down using the side of the pastel. Just cover the hair area. We don't want to go so dark with this that we can't see our lines that we've made where the highlights go. We're not putting any detail in, just layering down the, this color to begin with. looking a little strange at the moment. Okay, we're going to go to a dark brown and we're going to put it everywhere except where the highlights go. I'm going to start to get a little bit more detail with this color. Going slow, making sure I don't go put the color any place where it's not supposed to be. And I go mostly in the direction that the hair grows in or the hair flows in, I should say. Carefully going around the hand so we don't have hair going where it's not supposed to be. For the most part, we're going in the direction that the hair is. Keep your edges sharp, especially in this, this sort of area here. So we're going to be putting a few stray hairs in. Gives it a more realistic look. We don't want everything neat and perfect. Look at the reference picture again. See, we have a few stray hairs popping out here and there. Kind of a medium pressure stroke. Keep those edges sharp to get those hairs in. turn the pastel over my hand sometimes to get, you know, so I can use a different edge that, that may be a little sharper than the one I'm using if I've worn that down a little bit. Put the pastel in again in the direction that the hair is. And we're going to leave the areas that, that have the highlights in them. We're not going to fill those totally in. We want to keep those areas a little clean. turning the pastel over in my hand to give me a, a better edge. When you're putting the hairs in like this, you want to do one smooth movement. 
You don't want to stop halfway through the hair and try to pick up where you where you left off. So keep the pastel moving. She's got some stray hairs across her forehead. We're going to put it in. And again, one smooth movement for each hair. The highlights fairly clean. Do the other side the same way, going the direction that the hair is. Going slow around the edge of the face, keeping that neat and clean. Putting some stray hairs in over on this side. Notice I'm not going super fast. I'm not trying to rush this. I'm just trying to do a good job. I take my black and go into the darkest areas. Her hair is pretty dark. Got a little bit of black into the flesh that I don't want there, so I take my light flesh color and just go over it. Just take that right out of there. Continuing on with the black. I'm using the edge of the pastel mostly for the black. Going through the highlighted areas a little bit, but still leaving it so it's definitely a highlighted area. Catching a couple more stray hairs outside. Now we're going to take a medium brown and go over some of the highlight areas because there's definitely a brown showing in there. Using the edge, getting it nice and fine. Highlights and hairs are not just one big block of color. They're, they're like little streaks. You're seeing individual hairs that are lit up. Get the highlights on the other side. Not too many over there, but enough. Definitely important. And we're going to take white for the really lightest parts of the highlight and just streak it in. It's, it's hair. You're seeing individual hairs. You don't need a whole lot. Put a couple on the other side. I'm going to take some black streak it through just a little bit, just to tone this down a little bit. Get the black. Tone it down just a little bit. This area right here is just a little bit too light where the hairline and the uh, Flesh meat needs to be a little darker. That that looks better. Yeah, that looks better.
And that's pretty much it.